The argument over who wins the hydrocarbon resources found in the Niger Delta is one that is as old as the country. Indigents of the oil-rich Niger Delta continue to harbor the view that the Nigerian government has no right of claim to the oil and gas resources exploited and produced in the region. However, former President Olusha Gwambasojo, in a recent letter to elder statesman and leader of the Pan-Niger Delta Forum, Chief Edwin Clark, argued otherwise, insisting that the oil found in the region and other minerals located in different parts of the country belong to the federal government. Now joining us from Uyo, Akwaibom State, to further the debate on resource control is Victor Basi Atta, former governor of Akwaibom and chairman of the Nigerian Governors Forum from 2003 to 2007. Victor Atta will be remembered for leading the fight in the extant republic for the abrogation of the dichotomy between onshore and offshore oil revenue and ensure that the 13% derivation principle applied to all produced in literal states in the country. Good morning, Ms. Tata, and welcome to The Morning Show. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good to see you again, and thank you for joining us. Good morning, Robin. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Well, very quickly, I mean, between 1999 and uh, 2007, you were in the forefront of that uh, struggle for restructuring, resource control, federalism, and all of that. Now, many years later, we're still at that same point. And some people are saying restructuring is not possible. Uh, resource control is a problem. Uh, federalism should just be uh, the way it is. Uh, how do you feel that all of that struggle, many years later, we're still at that same point, and the country does not seem to have moved beyond where we were in 2007? Uh, Ruben, thank you. I don't think we are at same, that same point. We have actually moved backwards. Because the sort of things we are seeing today did not occur in the past. Um, we should have moved a lot further forward if we had only listened to the voice of reason. And um, I, I, I want to deal on the issue of why we are where we are. We have a number of uh, people who think they love Nigeria more than others. And because of that, they put forward theories that don't help us in any way. Um, let, let me refer specifically to um, the letter written by President uh, Olusegun Nobasan, your former president. We all know that uh, General Olusegun Nobasan is not a Democrat. He belongs to the profession of arms whose essential structure of command is dictatorial. And um, that's, the, the, that's, that's really the truth. And uh, he's later talked about um, federalism. He's later talked about, um, what did he talk about? He talked about um, uh, federalism and he talked about sovereignty. So I like to deal with those because those are the fundamental things that have kept us back as a country. I said he's not a Democrat, and I give, I give you my reasons. If you look at the bewildering frequency with which he changed the chairman of our party, the chairman of our party, you'll see that he didn't use methods that were in any way democratic. And the same applies even to the president, uh, presidency of the Senate. I think almost every Igbo senator became a president of the Senate because if Obasanjo doesn't want you, you can't be president of the Senate. And the manner in which he will change you was far from being democratic. But the worst aspect was when, after he left office, he now decided to come and take over the chairmanship of the Board of Trustees by muzzling out uh, Chief Antonio Anini. And the way he did it was far from being democratic. Now, when you go move away from democracy and you begin to look at um, federalism, his understanding of federalism I hold very, very suspect. Anybody that subscribed to federalism could not have done what former President Obasanjo did with the funds that belong to Lagos State local governments. That's one. And two, there's no way if we understood and practiced federalism, a president would have been able to assemble a few legislators from a state in Abuja and ask them to impeach uh, a, a, a properly elected governor of a state. That doesn't happen in, in, in federalism. 
And those are the things that really worry me when I hear people talk about federalism and federal government and all of that. Because those things don't, 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 don't just happen. They, 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 there's a system by which they should happen. And that system does not permit what happened to me in my issue of uh, the oil wells. Look at the way he took my, the oil wells that belonged to Aquaibom State and distributed them to, the, to River State, to um, Cross River State and decided that we were not oil producing. And yet, that is far from the truth. So I, and then his sovereign concept of sovereignty is the one that really worries me the most. He seems to think that there's something called sovereignty that owns Nigeria. And in fact, let me just read that small portion of it. He says, equity and justice demand that those domiciled in those locations those domiciled in those locations are entitled to more of the material benefits accruing from the crude oil or minerals in that area. Now, so there is a sovereignty that owns Nigeria. And we, the people of Nigeria, just happen to be domiciled in various parts of Nigeria. That's far from the truth. If you, if that'd be doing a big disservice to history. If you look at what happened, even in Europe, you had, um, you, you, you had a situation in which Bismarck was able to bring together the principalities of Germany into one strong Germany. Um, Marshal uh, Emperor Tito did the same thing in the Balkans and was able to put together Yugoslavia and, uh, and Czechoslovakia. And then Queen Mary, the daughter of an English king, married a, a Scottish king. The two kingdoms were never the same, but by, by two, between the two of them, they managed to merge the two kingdoms, and so you had the Great Britain of England, Scotland, Ireland, and, and of course, Wales. So the concept of federalism, the concept of sovereignty, the sovereignty belongs to the people. The people now invest the administration of that sovereignty in a group of elected people who are leading with a democracy, who now represent the government. And those people subscribe to a federation. And so, so long as you, remain, you continue with that subscription, yes, you are part of that federation, and you can surrender what of that you want to the federal government. That's why he is very correct. Obasanjo Joe was very correct when he said the federal government would pay to the states 50% of whatever was derived as revenue from those minerals. Yes, and at that time, what he didn't tell us, but I want to remind us, is that we had two accountant generals in Nigeria. One, the accountant general of the federation, and the other, the accountant general of the federal government, to make sure that one did not cheat the other. That was by an agreement. So our founding fathers were very, very thorough in the way they worked out our relationships. And they agreed, yes, these minerals belong to you. And they belong to you, but you will allow Nigeria to have the marketing rights, which it seems to confuse with ownership. All the minerals were marketed internationally by the federal government, but the federal government now would pay 50% to the state. Why has that changed? Because the military came in and we changed the rules, and having changed the rules, we refused to go back the rules by which we were put together. And if we only do that, believe me, all this will just fall away. So I do not agree with Obasanjo that the minerals don't belong. If it is true that the minerals don't belong, look, then by the time Czechoslovakia broke into Czech, Czech and, and Slovak Republic, then there should have been a sovereignty that came to Czechoslovakia and Slovak and say, uh, Slovakia and said, look, this thing doesn't belong to you, it belongs to the Czechs. Or go to the Czech Republic and say, this thing doesn't belong to you, it belongs to... So it doesn't happen. But on, and, and that was because they were, be, they were able to come to an arranged change. Britain also had an arranged change, and so they still keep their structure. But recently there was a plebiscite, even in Britain, because Scotland is still agitating, they want to go back. To, 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 to become independent. But in what we saw in Yugoslavia was a different story. 
you had this problem of Bosnia and Herzegovina, I can never pronounce that word, that name of that, but they, they had a big war that killed so many people, and that is because they could not come to an arranged change. And what we are saying to Nigeria is that, please let us come to an arranged change so that this oil, which belongs to Niger Delta people, can continue to be enjoyed by the rest of Nigeria. That's all we are saying. But don't say that, but if tomorrow you receive that and there's a situation in which that, that part of the country happens to break away, they will go with the oil. That is when people will wake up and realize that the oil actually belongs to them. We don't want it to be established by that method. We want it to be established by the method of negotiation and agreement and arrangement so that the oil and everything else which belongs to the people who own the land, the people were there, they own the land, they own the minerals inside the land but they agree to subscribe to the Federation and therefore surrender whatever was agreed, they should surrender to the Federation. I think we should get that confusion cleared in our mind so that we no longer talk about minerals belonging to a federal government or one sovereignty. This sovereignty is, is by subscription. The minute you refuse to subscribe further, that sovereignty fades away. Well, thank you, sir, for that enormously important historical context and the distinctions that you've provided here. But seeing as we have laid quite a poor foundation for the Fourth Republic in 1999, how do we frame the conversation and the issues going forward so hopefully we can have a fresh start in 2023 and actually affect federalism in this country? Very simple. And we've said it. We had a model in the 1960 constitution, we took seven years of negotiation with the North to agree to. And then we, when we became a republic, it became the 1963 constitution. Just please adopt it and modify what aspects of it need to be adopted or modified to suit the present circumstances. Because when we started, we had only three federating units, then it went up to four, now we have 36. Make the adjustments. And if you make those adjustments and keep essentially to the principles spelled out in that, in that condition, we are fine. And all of this will go away. You will live wherever you want to live, you'll do whatever you want to do, and provided you are within the law. And believe me, we'll be back to where we want it to be, which is a true federal system that favors everybody. Nobody is advocating anything new. This is a surprising thing. We had it, we lived with it, and we, it worked. Nobody faulted it. The military came not because it was wrong, but because they say some people were corrupt, but this is corrupted, but this is, why not deal with those pe pe persons? But you now change the system, and they had to change the system because the military only understands one command line. But the military have been gone for over 50 years now. Why are we still keeping that? That is our only issue. Let us go back to that 1963 constitution and we'll be fine. And President Robertson John will admit that by that constitution, people own what they own and surrender it to the Fed, what the portion has agreed to be surrendered to the Federation, not the other way around. So, so we need a new constitution for Nigeria. Okay. A new constitution that's made by the people for the people. And that constitution should be modeled on the 1963 constitution, which he quoted in his letter. But how do you make that new constitution where people that campaign vigorously for restructuring finally say, we can't give it, we can't do it? And how do you make that constitution work when somebody that has just you know, declared his intention to run for president in this country said there are actually some people that are the owners of Nigeria? Do you know any of such people? <laughs> People are the owners of Nigeria, the people that claim they can do whatever they want to do in Nigeria. I think he must have been saying it with his tongue in, tongue in cheek. It doesn't mean that they are big. Who owns Nigeria? People that own Nigeria, the people that the people of Nigeria. And as I said, sovereignty belongs, it resides in them. The way to make a concern in a way is not as simple as I'm going to define it, but it is it's really that simple if we all agree that we want to make a new constitution. There should be an act of parliament asking for a, a, a sovereign conference to be held. 
That issue of sovereignty will be solved if it comes through an act of parliament. Because they always argue, you can't have two sovereignties. You've given us the, the sovereign rights to administer this country, so they can't be an a parallel. But if they make the law saying there should be a sovereign conference, we will have that sovereign conference. And that conference will come out with a, a new constitution for Nigeria. And that constitution, new constitution, will be subject only to a plebiscite, if you like. It cannot be subject to the to the assembly, because we will then see selfish interests being brought into it. That constitution, once it is passed through a referendum or plebiscite, becomes the constitution made by Nigerians for Nigerians. Believe me, it is that simple. Only for people who are now in the assembly are saying, hey, that means there may not be a Senate in future. There may not be this. But there will be none of that if there's no Nigeria. So the first thing to do is to preserve Nigeria's existence. And we can only preserve Nigeria's existence if all of us that are Nigerians come to the table, as happened between 1953 and 1960, if all of us come to the table and agree that we will now become, be remain Nigerians under the following terms and conditions. Full stop. Well, sir, you've been quoted as saying that without restructuring, Nigeria will break up. And that, in fact, without restructuring... Then yes, they, and they, I stand by that. Yes. Because that's why I told you at the beginning that we are not even where we were before. We are moving backwards. There has never been such hatred, such division, such, such total, almost total anarchy, such anomaly. We've never seen, we've not seen it before. I know you cited the uh, 1963 constitution, uh, which should be modified and all of that. And there are many who hold that view too. Uh, but restructuring means different things to different people. Some people see it from the angle of state police, some people see it from uh, some other angles. What in specific terms uh, does restructuring mean to you? A wholesale return to the 1963 constitution or something else? And you say something from the aspect of no. Those are ingredients of state police is part of it. Resource control is part of it. You go and read the constitution, all of it is there. We had those things. And they are all aspects of, the, of federalism, true federalism that we practice. They are not angles of, they are aspects of. So we just return to that condition and you'll see that all those things, all those elements are there. So what's your take on the NDDC issue with the president recently making quite you know, strong threats against those found to be wanting in any way with regards to the forensic audit reports, which has still not been made public? What's your take on that and the fact that the NDDC board still has not been inaugurated, as well as the future of the NDDC with the addition of states that are not within the Southwest, South-South? Please. Let me ask a rhetorical question and I'll answer. What is NDDC? Niger Delta Development Corporation. In, by what stretch of imagination can you imagine the Arabia, Imo, Ondo, uh, even now Lagos and Bauchi are in Niger Delta? A complete misnomer. That, uh, that body is set up to administer all producing standards. That's what it should be. Maybe the former name of one party, all Mera producing areas, something, something was, was more appropriate than NDDC. This, 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 this is not saving the Niger Delta in any way. So I lost interest in NDDC, and by God's grace, some of us, I, I'm, I'm, not linked, I'm not claiming all, all the credit, but certainly went to President Yardo and said, look, if you truly want to develop the Niger Delta, look at it the way the Federal Capital Territory was developed a separate ministry had to be set up so that it has its own budget for infrastructure, has its own separate budget for health, for education, and all of the things that make up a city. If you have that, you will develop. But if you are going to depend on the Federal Ministry of Works to put the roads in the Federal Capital Territory and Federal Ministry of Health to do the health, the health provide the health services, Ministry of Education to provide the it will not happen. And he bought the idea and created the Ministry of Niger Delta. Now I hear they're going to be merged. 
So we, we just don't even, we, I, I, it's like we don't even know what we wanted to do. NDDC, when it was set up, was not intended to be putting boreholes and providing deaths in primary schools. Even local governments do that. It was meant to do regional things. So if you want to have, let's look at the whole thing. If you want to make them, make them whatever you want to do. Set up a body that will develop regionally, regionally, the area called the Niger Delta. What I, maybe like everything else in Nigeria, maybe we all, all in new, need a new best. But going into this forensic audit, and the result of which nobody will ever know, promising. The, we were promised that the, 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 the who could you call it, Bokaram have been um, disabled, or this, or that, or they, they, they be finished by the year 20, 20, whatever, they are still there. So promising to go after somebody, even the governor the other day promised to name those who were sponsoring uh, violence in his day. He didn't name them. So I don't go by these promises. I just go by the fact that we have failed to do the things we ought to do to make Nigeria what it ought to be. And what we ought to do is to give Nigeria a federal constitution and advocate it should be under the parliamentary system, not presidential. Okay, uh, I'd like to ask you about this PIA. Okay, we'll go for a quick break and we'll come back and we'll talk some more, sir. All right, welcome back. We still have uh, Victor Basiata, a former governor of Akwa Ibom State and chairman of Nigeria Governors Forum uh, from 2003 to 2007. Uh, the first question, sir, is about the PIA. What's your take about the PIA? and uh, you know, the provisions for the host community. And secondly, you talked about the Niger Delta Ministry. A lot of people will tell you straight that the problem with the Niger Delta Ministry could be linked to the head of the ministry, the minister, and that's uh, Governor Godfrey of Papio. Would you say he's been a disappointment in that ministry? I'm um, talking about the PIA. Um, I don't discuss things that I don't know enough about. I don't even understand what the petroleum industry bill and the, the act is, 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 is all about, quite honestly, because for one thing, so long as we are bringing the act under the present circumstances, the circumstances being that in concept, oil belongs to the federal government, oil be like, then I'm not interested. Until we go back to the true position, which is that the oil belongs to the people who own the oil, and the federal government is, is, is having a share of it, then any act you bring to me is meaningless. So I, I don't show enough interest in that host community. What's host community? You're talking about the people who own the land as host community. What does that mean? So, so why don't you come and host it? So maybe this host community can change from time to time. Today is Victor, that tomorrow is somebody else. Please, look. If Nigeria doesn't want to move forward, Nigeria will not move forward. And it will break, as I, as I predict. But Nigeria should do things to move forward, and that is do the correct thing. So that's one. And then we we'll talk about, the, I don't discuss persons. I'm, I'm not interested. NDDC, the minute NDDC failed to be what it is, and it's not even the correct name for the organization, I, I, again, I lost interest. So whether the head is doing well, head is not doing well, the question is, is NDDC doing well? And there's a big N-O, no. It is not doing what it is supposed to do. It's not developing the region. It's not providing. Look, we are talking today, we get so upset about this pollution because of illegal refining. Why should they be illegal refining? Well, a model refinery should have spread across the Niger Delta by now. If you had modular refinery, these people are into oil, and that's all they know. So give them the opportunity to, to do this oil business. Give them the opportunity to market it. It has to be marketed. And you are refusing to do any of this, and you're talking about uh, PIA and talking about uh, and DDC, please. I, I really, I, 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 at 83, I can select what I want to concern myself with and what I don't want to concern myself with. And today, I'm concerned with trying to see whether Nigeria can be corrected. Well, sir, I got your point about saying you don't want to discuss uh, persons. But as of uh, 2007, when you left office as uh, governor of Akwaibom State, you had generated some momentum in terms of development and all that. And at the national level, uh, 
you know, you, you let that struggle on the uh, onshore, offshore dichotomy abrogation, which is well referenced in uh, my friend Aitim Aitim's uh, book, Akwai Boom uh, Heroes. But when you look back, after you left, you were succeeded by Gosula Pabio. After Gosula Pabio, we have had Udome Manuel. Gosula Pabio even had the privilege of going to Abuja to be senator, to be minister of uh, Niger Delta Affairs. Do you feel that your successors have dropped the ball and that they failed in many respects to sustain the momentum that you left behind without necessarily commenting on their individual capacity? Ruben, I don't know how I can make any statement regarding what you, the question without commenting on their individual capacities. But let me make a very much, a much more general statement. I gave a recent lecture, and the title of the lecture was Setting Agenda for a Quiet Boom of the Future. And I based it on a statement that was made by the wartime Prime Minister of... Um, of Britain, Sir Winston Churchill, who said, if you open a quarrel between the past and the present, you'll find that you have lost the future. I think to a very large extent, a quiet boom, subsequent government open a quarrel between the, the, the present and, and the past, and a quiet boom lost the future in several respects. I started a science park. <laughs> it was aborted. I started a university of technology, a unique university of technology. It's been aborted. I started the MRO, the Maintenance, Repair, and Overall Facility, a zonal hub. From the time of Yeguda, we got the US Department of State to do the feasibility study for that project. Today, it's still standing uncompleted. So look, I don't want to comment on persons, and there's no way I can comment on what has happened since I left without commenting on person's abilities. So Akwaibum people are there to judge, and thank God today, the, the present governor named the airport after me, uh, Victor Ta International Airport, something that they said I left at only 5%, 2%, call, but at least he recognized that I went very far with developing that airport, and he named it, and I thank him immensely for that. I'll be remain grateful to him for that. and. Uh, I understand he's making tremendous efforts to complete the MRO because today the aviation industry is suffering because we don't have a proper maintenance facility. And we brought Dyneco. Dyneco, if you know, is the, the, the company that maintains Air Force One, the presidential fleet in America, to be the operator of that MRO because we're working all the time through the American ambassador. But today, Talk about, and I mentioned the science power, University of Technology, similar things that could have put, even the, 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 the deep water port, which we started at, at the Baka, so many things that would have put a quiet boom, but there was a fear. Let me tell you now, Ruben, you were there. You should have known. There was a fear that if a, if a quiet boom gets its own power, gets its own seaport, gets its own area, a quiet boom will secede. Secede and go where? So there was a considerable effort to stop me from developing this state. It's just God's grace and shared determination that made it possible for me to go as far as I did. So when you say I made some development, no, I made a lot of development. That's why today Akwaibum people are appreciative enough to call me the father of modern Akwaibum. So please, the, the, the whole setup in Nigeria is very, very upsetting, very, very unfortunate, and until we take a decision to correct it, <laughs> we'll remain there. We may not remain there, we may just even break up. I'm going to go back to 2023 because it just seems like, you know, our last chance almost at this point. What is your take on the call for power to rotate to the south, whereas some insist that we should just, you know, go with the best candidate presenting themselves so that the next president of Nigeria could be another northerner? Anybody that says you should go with the best candidate must first of all say that we should go back to federalism with a parliamentary system so that people are elected into an assemblage of people and the leader is just the prime minister. The others will be ministers. The others will have functions to, 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 to perform. And then you can select, it'll be just like the first among equal. If they don't say that, then they cannot talk about uh, the, how do you have to be the best of the candidate. The, 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 
If you do what I'm suggesting, what a lot of us are suggesting, go back to federalism with the parliamentary system. Believe me, this turn by turn rulership will not have, and it, it happens because everybody sees in the president a, a dictator. He dictated nothing. Look, the, the House of the National Assembly is complaining about uh, uh, the president brought, he, he left out projects, we want to part, we want to put in projects. That will not happen in a parliamentary system. It will be collective. It will be contributive. Everyone will contribute ideas. The, when the projects come out, it will be because that's what Nigeria wants, not what the president wants. And we begin to complain or we begin to part. So those that are saying projects should not rotate must first of all say that we want to go back to a federal, proper federal system and in, within that federal system operated by the parliamentary system. Because if you don't do that, then this turn by turn, requirement will be there because my people, my people, my people, everybody has to have his turn to say my people are now in charge. Right, sir. But you said, you know, the president of Nigeria has so much power, enormous power, dictatorial and everything. And now you're advocating for restructuring, which a lot of people subscribe to. But the question is, you tried at some point to be president in this country. Why wasn't your, you know, advocacy then about restructuring. Why did you try getting into the same system now you're complaining about? Thank you. Because if I had been that president, if there was a democratic process that allowed me to go forward, I believe I could have been there. Nigeria wouldn't be where it is today. Nigeria would have gone back to a federal system. Nigeria would be operating a parliamentary system. Do you remember uh, uh, Gorbachev? I would have done exactly what Gobaja would have finished this system and brought the proper system into Nigeria. Thank you, Ruben, for asking me that question. <clears throat> well, sir, uh, President Buhari in an interview recently said that uh, he has done his best and he doesn't expect that uh, Nigerians would, would uh, commend him when he's no longer in office, but that he has done his best. Do you think that his best is good enough? Again, you want me to judge President Buhari? I think there's been enough judgment passed on President Buhari. You don't have to add mine to anybody else's judgment. Well, but what's your assessment, particularly on the key issues of security, economy, <laughs> and the fight against corruption? My assessment is that Nigeria is not where it ought to be. <laughs> Full stop. Well, thank, thank you very much, Obon Victor Atta, for joining us on The Morning Show. Thank you very much indeed.